In SAP Business One, you can maintain multiple tax jurisdictions with corresponding tax rates. A tax jurisdiction can be a city, county, state, or any additional value defined by the user. Let's take a look at the tax jurisdictions by going to Administration, Setup, Financials, Tax, and Sales Tax Jurisdiction Types. Here you can see that we have four jurisdiction types set up, Special District, State, County, and City. We can also access this window from the Sales Tax Jurisdictions window by selecting Define New. You can define a new jurisdiction in this window and then click Update to save your changes. The next step is to create jurisdiction values and assign tax rates to each one. For the state jurisdiction, the rates are automatically assigned, but for other jurisdictions, you will need to create the ones that are relevant for the company and will be used in tax codes. Let's take a look at setting up some cities relevant to our company. Select City in the Jurisdiction drop-down and select OK. Specify a unique code for the city and a jurisdiction name. Let's scroll over to look at the relevant tax accounts. For the sales tax account, define the account to be used for the tax and sales documents. Define the account to be used for tax and purchasing documents in the Purchase Tax Account field. The Use Tax is the account used in purchasing documents when the Use Tax is configured. This account will be used in scenarios where the vendor does not charge you sales tax, but you still need to pay these taxes. The deferred tax account can be used in sales or purchase documents when the document is marked as deferred tax. Now we can define our tax rates and periods. To do so, double click on the row number to open the valid period setup window for this city. To find the effective from date and the appropriate tax rate and then select update. Oftentimes tax rates change, so if you know the date and new rate will be effective for the jurisdiction, enter the date and the updated tax rate on the second line. The system will check the document posting date against the effective from date to determine the appropriate tax rate to use on the document. Be sure to update the main window to save your changes. Once all the jurisdictions are defined, you can now create the tax codes. The tax codes can contain multiple jurisdictions, where the sum of the rates will be the total tax rate for the tax code. Under the same folder in the modules menu, select the sales tax codes window. Assign a unique code and a name for the tax code. Then, if you want, you can select the freight checkbox to calculate tax on the freight amount entered in the document when the code is used. Select the jurisdiction type, and then select the jurisdiction value for each of the necessary jurisdictions. Note that the tax rate for this new tax code is 8.5%, which is the total of the effective rates for each of our assigned jurisdictions. We can now add this new sales tax code into the system. Let's look at how taxes are determined on our sales documents. Here you can see that for our company MaxiTech, the Baltimore tax code we just created is being used for our first item line. For sales documents, the system pulls the tax code to the document rows for the selected ship to address of the customer. We can see that for MaxiTech, their default ship to address has the BM tax code assigned to it. So when we enter this business partner into a sales document, the BM tax code will be used. We can also manually change the ship to address under the logistics tab. If we change this to ship to number two and update the rows, now we can see that the CA tax code is being used since this is the tax code assigned to ship to address two. Let's change this back to the default ship to address for our example. If we scroll over on the lines of the sales order, we can see a field that displays the tax amount with a drill down arrow. Drill into this to see how the tax is being calculated. We can see how each jurisdiction is calculating its own portion of the total tax amount based on how we set up our tax code originally. On the purchase order, the tax code is determined based on the warehouse assigned to the document rows. Here we can see that the New York tax code is assigned to the first row. When we set up Warehouse 01 originally, we had to assign a tax code based on where the warehouse is located. This is where the New York tax code is being pulled from for the purchase order. Unlike the sales order, we can drill down into the tax amount field and manually adjust the calculated amounts from each jurisdiction. But for both the sales and the purchasing documents, the tax code can be manually changed directly on the rows. To help you manage taxes in the database, use the tax report, which is found under financials, financial reports, accounting, tax, and tax report. 
You can filter the data to only grab documents in a posting date range, and you can select which types of documents you want to filter by. We can also run the report by jurisdictions or by tax code. Let's run this for all of our jurisdictions and for our AR documents. The report will display the tax code and jurisdiction setup information, as well as the amounts from the documents if applicable. Use the black arrows to expand the information and drill down into the relevant sales document. Setting up tax codes and tax jurisdictions is just one example of the tools available for you to use in SAP Business One to help you configure the system to meet your specific business needs. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turning on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, Visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.